All right, what's up, everybody? So it seems like bad news can't stop coming out of Ubisoft as of late, which, in complete fairness, seems to be making a lot of people very happy at the same time. I don't think it's a bit of a... Uh, it's a secret to say that many gamers hold somewhat of a grudge against Ubisoft uh, lately, not only for the direction that they've taken many of their biggest franchises in, like Assassin's Creed and uh, Far Cry. We all know what happened there with, you know... Way too many sequels. Uh, I, I guess the soul really seems to be lacking out of those games nowadays. I even went back recently to play a lot of the Assassin's Creed titles from, you know, sort of like uh, 2010, around that year, right? So I played Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood. I played some Unity as well. And it made me realize, like, man, I always thought that those games wouldn't hold up as well anymore nowadays. But they absolutely do. Gameplay-wise, maybe I do have some issues, right? I never liked how Ubisoft games, they just feel like work. It's the same rehashed gameplay loop over and over again throughout, you know, basically across all these franchises, right? But I will say that even though there were definitely those issues also now going back to those old games, story-wise, they just seem to have so much more soul, like I just said, right? The characters, uh, the, the, the soundtrack, some of the dialogue and the story that was being told, you know, Ezio making a lot of sort of politically incorrect jokes I noticed <laughs> with love interest that he had, but also really funny um, uh, moments sometimes where the uncle shows up and goes, it's a me, Mario, right? But then, I don't know, it's just like... And then you play, for example, Unity, which I did literally a couple of days ago, reinstall it on my PlayStation after I saw somebody make a video about it uh, very randomly. But, man, that city design is so absolutely fantastic, right? At the time, of course, we complained a lot about the bugs, and that was... I mean, rightfully so, the game had a lot of issues when it launched. Um, nowadays still, again, it doesn't play the best, right? The frame rate is still 30 frames, although now perfectly playable, you know, being that you, of course, can play them on your next-gen consoles. But again, when you look at that game and you literally hold it side to side to some of the newest Assassin's Creed games that we see now with Valhalla and Odyssey and Origins, it honestly looks better. That's, that's how I feel, right? Like, Unity is the game that I would want to play over any of those. But maybe that's just me personally. I mean, I did a poll even for my viewers, I remember, a couple of months back. And even there, there seemed to be this complete unanimous agreement that the older games were better than the newer ones. Which is weird, because I do know that those games, the, the latest one they've, that they've brought out, have been breaking sales records, I think. And I feel like popularity for, for example, the Assassin's Creed franchise is at a height. I could be wrong about that, though. You know, these... It's, it's, it's hard to know what the numbers are like, not only because you can't just compare sales anymore, you also have to think, for example, about some of the in-game purchases that people make use of nowadays, which were never in those older games, right? That's ultimately what counts for a company like Ubisoft. It is, you know, the revenue that those games rake in, of course, which they care about the most. And so that's the only thing that matters for them at the end of the day. But it's not, it's not just the direction that they've taken their games into. It's also, of course, the misconduct stories that we've heard come out of the company it's you know it's it's the presentations that i myself personally can't stand i hate how ubisoft is never upfront about any of their games before launch they don't actually show you gameplay when they reveal a game they literally show you a cgi trailer it can't even be an in-game cinematic it literally always is cgi and then they hype it up to be this big thing and i just I can't stand it, because I'm like, who are you deceiving? Everybody understands a CGI trailer is not representative of the final product in the slightest. And so I always feel it's a complete waste of my time to watch any of those shows. And I don't really, you know, give Ubisoft games anymore a chance until I see reviews come in and I know what to expect from a particular game from them. That being said, I will have to give them some credit, because I was going down a list of, like, what Ubisoft games have I actually played over the last generation, for example, right? And that's when I definitely came to the conclusion that while I give them a lot of shit, mainly for some of those bigger series that I just talked about, I also, you know, uh, understood that Ubisoft was the company responsible for, you know, the South Park games, for Trials, Trials Fusion and Rising, which I really like, right? Uh, Steep, I actually was a big fan of. Trackmania, Rayman Legends, one of the best games I've played in the last 10 years, perhaps in my whole life of playing video games. And even some of those games that came out early in the generation, the PlayStation 4 I'm talking about, Valiant Hearts, Child of Light, you can say what you want about Ubisoft, but they definitely do have a very diversified lineup. Um, even thinking back now about, for example, a game like For Honor, which definitely 
tried something differently, didn't exactly succeed at it, you know, too well, if you'd ask me. I thought the game was just kind of bare bones, but hey, they tried something different, and I can only respect that. Now, to actually talk then about the news that we heard from Ubisoft. So apparently, um, they came out essentially with a statement to their investors and announced that they've cancelled three unannounced projects. We don't know what they actually are. The thing is, those three projects are coming on top of four cancelled projects that we already heard about a little earlier last year, I think it was. <laughs> so, not just that, Skull and Bones once again has been getting delayed and is now scheduled for around the summer. I think this marks the sixth delay in total for that game. Of course, it's been in complete development hell because I think it was announced at E3 2017, I'd like to say, you know, pretty much still coming off relatively recently off of, you know, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which it was clearly based on uh, uh, emphasizing on that on that ship combat once again, right? Now, Yves Guillemot did say that apparently the additional time has already paid off and brought impressive improvements to its quality, which has been confirmed by recent playtests, and that he expects players will be positively surprised by its evolution. I have no idea whether to take any of his words seriously about that anymore, because, again, we all know that the vision seems to be completely lacking for that game. Um, so many stories came out about how the team was struggling to even answer the most basic questions years into development, like whether you actually played as a boat or as a character instead. <laughs> so, you know, early on, it was only the ship combat footage that we got from that game. Later on, a couple years, I feel, finally we understood that like, oh, wait, you actually do control your character as well, right? But then we never heard from the game again. And so everybody continues to be completely confused about what that game even is supposed to um, really be about in its entirety, I guess. And so I like the ship combat in Assassin's Creed 4. I just feel like, <sighs> again, it's, it's, it's kind of the exact same way as I look at, at Assassin's Creed. The gameplay loop is fine, don't get me wrong. But the question is, is there a story around it? Are there characters that you care for? You know, the context based around the entire product is what ultimately matters to make that gameplay in itself... Um, I mean, to, to, to make you, I guess, want to get lost in that world is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, that's what it requires at the same time. So, Yves Gimo also mentioned that Ubisoft in particular was very disappointed by the performance of games like Mario plus Rabbits and Just Dance recently. Um, there's a bunch of other projects which are still in trouble at the moment. Not only the Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake, which is something I'm definitely excited for, I will say, or at least I was when they announced it, because I actually never played any of the Prince of Persia games, but they seem to be totally up my alley as somebody who loves action-adventure games, right? Particularly with, a, with an emphasis on platforming. Um, yeah, I was actually really looking forward to that game when they announced it in 2020, but at the time... We heard that Ubisoft India was apparently made responsible for it, and that's a relatively small team. I, did, I don't think they ever really got enough resources to truly turn that game into something significant. Into a remake, let's say, that's really up to standard, I guess, for the status that I think the Prince of Persia name still very much has, right? Then there's also Beyond Good and Evil 2, which <laughs> literally, I think they announced, uh, officially teased it in 2008. <laughs> Go figure. And then we never heard from it for like 10 years, I think, until they finally brought it back, E3 2017, there once again. Ever since, complete development hell, never heard from it again. And apparently right now, Ubisoft is still saying that the game is in quote-unquote early development. So go figure. It's going to be a while, <laughs> if ever, that we get to play that game in particular too. Stock prices have been plummeting as a result for the last two years and I will say that while we live in a relatively weak economic climate and you see most companies, tech companies at least that is, at the moment going downhill, Ubisoft's decline in particular is disastrous. I mean, <laughs> the percentage decrease there does not compare to a Microsoft or, you know, any, any company that you name and so... It is very clear that, like I said, the company is in trouble. And Yves Guillemot himself is admitting to it, not only with this statement that they therefore brought out announcing these uh, these cancellations of unannounced projects, but it's also an email that he apparently sent out to his employees, basically across uh, all the offices. And the contents of it, I mean, <laughs> it's honestly quite hilarious to, to read. So Yves Guillemot actually says... Today, more than ever, I need your full energy and commitment to ensure we get back on the path to success. I am also asking that each of you be especially careful and strategic with your spending and initiatives to ensure we're being as efficient and lean as possible. Basically, what he's doing um, 
And I've heard, you know, other YouTubers talk about this. He's completely seems to be denying his own responsibility in it all, right? As the leader of Ubisoft, he's sort of just putting the, the blame on his employees. They're telling them to make sure that Ubisoft gets back on the path to success when in reality, he's the one responsible. He should be leading them towards that path, right? I don't really think you can ask much more from your employees individually uh, than what they're already doing right now. I... An email like this just comes across as a complete strategic blunder, especially because you know it's going to get leaked, because you know websites will be picking up on it and everybody's going to be talking about it. I honestly don't know what Yves Guillemot is thinking in that situation. And if I was one of Ubisoft's employees, I mean, honestly, the dude is like three feet tall. <laughs> I would not be impressed by him threatening me in the sliders. Like, I can only imagine that threatening his employees through emails is the only way he's going to be able to do that because actually standing in front of them in his squeaky voice or whatever telling them to, to go work on the next Assassin's Creed game or else I will fire you it's never <laughs> it's never going to come across the right way at all if you'd ask me but <laughs> Ubisoft staff has announced that they're actually going to be holding a strike uh, because employees I think rightfully so seem to be unhappy with that well let's say let's say the blame is being put in their shoes uh, you know, by their, by their boss, and I can definitely understand that. Apparently, they complain that their salaries have not really kept up with inflation, for example, and yeah, I, I mean, I, I would comment on those things, but it's like, I don't really know what goes on behind the scenes, so I think it's kind of pointless. I see a lot of channels that like to talk about these things and just assume automatically that, like, oh, everything is terrible, right, as an employee for the company, and uh, it's always the people in charge that are to blame. I mean, I'm not saying that here, like I said, this email was a complete blunder, right? I am the first person to admit that. But at the same time, again, you don't know the full scope of what actually does go on behind the scenes. And so I'm not going to comment too much about it there either. Um, here's the thing that I did want to discuss, though. There is one absolutely terrifying aspect, if you'd ask me, to this whole situation. And it's something that most people don't consider because they think, oh, Ubisoft is going downhill. That's great for us, right? But when you really think about it, Ubisoft going downhill, having to downsize perhaps, right? Fire a lot of people. Um, yeah, focus on significantly less, uh, a, a lesser amount of projects. And for example, canceling these unannounced projects for which we don't know what the actual contents of those games were, right? We don't know if they are numbered sequels in the typical series. I highly doubt it, to be honest, uh, uh, that we know so well, or if these were actually pretty creative for example games that you know new ip perhaps or something that could have genuinely um uh, excited those of us that do look always for that 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 spark in the gaming scene which you know again i do have to give ubisoft credit for sometimes they do come up with those games um uh, uh yeah to kind of pique our interest and to do something that normally we don't see from most triple a publishers out there so that's what I'm talking about. The document that Ubisoft published had a couple pieces of text in there that for me did not, uh, <laughs> well, they were all too foreboding, let's say, because I'm just going to read uh, literally straight up what they mentioned. It says Ubisoft strengthens strategic focus on biggest brands and live services with a new set of measures, cementing long-term growth and value creation prospects. The company mentions that despite some of their achievements, they are facing major challenges as the industry continues to shift towards mega brands and long lasting titles that can reach players across the globe, across platforms and business models. We will ensure that all our energy is focused on building our brands and live services into some of the most powerful within the industry. What that tells me is again, that as Ubisoft is able to take less risk, they're gonna focus even more on the games we already know about and for which we've already had way too many sequels come out. More Assassin's Creed, more Far Cry, more The Division, more Ghost Recon, uh, perhaps the new Watch Dogs, and that's it. You're not gonna get those smaller titles uh, as much anymore because guess what? They probably won't sell. This is Ubisoft's line of thinking at the moment and I can't say I necessarily blame them for it. I find it fascinating that uh, even though so many people complain about Assassin's Creed, the recent games still seem to be selling more than ever. And all that that does is make them feel more, you know, justified, I guess, in focusing on the future of Assassin's Creed. And we've already seen it, of course, with the announcement of Mirage. There's also the, the Hexay game. I, I honestly don't even know how that's pronounced, but it's like a more, 
I will say that one piqued my interest a little bit because it was looking a little creepy or something, right? But again, it was only like a logo reveal we got out of it. It didn't tell us jack shit about what the game itself is going to play like or be about. But um, clearly that's what it ultimately means at the end of the day. And it's the same strategy we're seeing deployed across not only Ubisoft, but we're seeing PlayStation do it. Only focusing on a handful of IP and flashing those out as much as possible, but therefore not really having the variety as much anymore. Microsoft is doing a bit of a different thing, I feel, where because they have Game Pass and it's a subscription model, they actually focus more on quantity over quality, which as a result means that they have a more diverse lineup, but the games just never really stand out. I feel like <laughs> you, you can't really get the best of both worlds anymore. Either you're going for quantity or you're going for quality but then the variety is going to be completely lacking if that makes sense anyway that is what the future of gaming seems to be hold and i'm curious from you all how that makes you feel how do you personally feel about that i i think it's it's difficult man because for example with a game like assassin's creed mirage coming up uh which again right now we've only seen a cgi trailer for it Ubisoft is saying that they're going to be going back to the roots for it, which is automatically what has a lot of people excited. But I'm super skeptical because I just know that, I mean, not only did we literally hear that Assassin's Creed Mirage started out as DLC for Valhalla, which therefore doesn't make me understand in the slightest how it could actually go back to the roots. Um, <laughs> I just feel like the company has disappointed us over and over and over with some of these franchises and so i won't give them the benefit of the doubt until they actually show me gameplay show me what they've done show me that the soul has returned to these games i just don't honestly see it happening when i play some of these old school assassin's creed titles when i play far cry 3 still right which was like kind of the height of that franchise um far cry 4 still pretty good i think with 5 and 6 it's interesting because I feel like the gameplay loop hasn't even necessarily changed much, right? It's still the, that same thing. It's just that the creativity has been lost, not only in the settings that they pick and in the in the in the in the storytelling, which I feel definitely has been going downhill. It's also just the fact that with time, they never actually evolved a franchise like Far Cry to truly make it something that feels modern. With Assassin's Creed, they did do that with their RPG style, but I don't even necessarily know if that's much of an improvement at all. It just means more content uh, that's less engaging. That's how I look at it at the end of the day. You know, I played Origins a couple of years back and I was surprised because at the beginning I was kind of enjoying myself, but until you know, maybe like five to ten hours in where I was suddenly required to do like 12 side quests before I could even do the next main mission when I realized that I had just completed three of the main areas and there were going to be like 50 of them in total. I just couldn't really do it anymore, man. I don't understand how people still continue to play these games for hundreds of hours, constantly getting the same thing over and over again. I mean, that's cool, of course. If you enjoy it, more power to you. I just think that for me, I look for something with a little bit more substance. And when I go back to, again, some of those older Assassin's Creed's, I'm surprised how they actually do still have that substance. I'm surprised that when I booted up Brotherhood after beating Assassin's Creed 2, it started off with a huge, you know, half hour awesome set piece moment uh, there where the, the villa where his uh, uncle lived and stuff, you know, everything sort of collapses and... Uh, the soundtrack as well, that bombastic music that kicks in. And then it's like nowadays you look at uh, you look at what Assassin's Creed has turned into, but you also look at, for example, how that identity has changed entirely. Yet they keep relying, for example, on the same old Ezio's family theme for all these games <laughs> that they play during their presentations. To me, it just comes across so che cheap. It comes across like you're just literally banking in on the nostalgia that people have while you're not in any way delivering that same quality. Um, that same reason why people fell in love with your games in the first place. I just can't really do it anymore, man. But once again, let me know in the comments how you feel about the future of Ubisoft. Are there any games still coming out from them that you're looking forward to? What do you think about, for example, the future of franchises like Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, and all the other ones that I mentioned? Uh, yeah, and then with that being said, of course, I would like to ask you to leave a like on the video. That would really help me out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, as I will continue to be talking about gaming news here on a weekly basis. And I hope you're all going to be here for it. So with that being said, I want to thank you all a lot for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you back in the next video.